The first thing I'd like to show you is a device that looks something like a lie detector, but it's certainly not a lie detector. What this is, is a, um, they call this a strip recorder, but what it is in fact is basically a data chart, a data charter or plotter, I guess. Um, what it does is it, uh, when you turn it on, it um, starts to move very slowly. Turn the chart speed on. Here we go. The chart is now moving, but it's not charting anything because it's hooked up to this optical sensor that senses light. Now, if the pen wasn't completely dead, let's try to get it wet. Maybe we can get it to, to actually write something here. Take the pen out. Get some water on it. It's totally dried up. Um, get a little bit of water in there. Get some moisture in that thing here. Let's see if we can get it to work. Ah, looks like we did. So here we go. So now it's basically detecting light. If I move my hand and change the shadow in front of the sensor, there we go. It's now working. All I'm doing is just changing the shadow in front of the light sensor. Now I'll tell you how this is used. But first we need to see the second piece of equipment that is in that magic box of wonders. What you're looking at here is the power supply to a Class 3B laser made by the Hughes Aircraft Company which is in my left hand. Oh, there it is. Um, this device is the real deal. This is a commercial grade helium neon class 3B laser. It runs on about 400 volts going through this little cable here and uh, is powerful enough to require safety goggles to use. Um, that is an OSHA requirement, and it also requires a keyed power supply so that uh, it cannot be turned on by unauthor unauthorized personnel, such as myself. Um, it does work. I will demonstrate it for you, but very carefully. The Class 3B lasers, using the old system of uh, laser classification, um, are extremely dangerous. They they can cause skin damage. You can feel heat if you shine it on your hand or whatever. Um, not that I've done it, but I've, I've read reports of you know, how dangerous they are. Um, they will blind you within one one hundredth of a second of direct laser exposure to the eye, causing permanent uh, retinal damage. Um, I believe they can cause corneal burns as well. Um, they're they're not safe. Let's put it that way. And I don't I don't know for sure if it's legal for me to own this laser, um, but it does work. And uh, here we go. We'll turn it on. Oops. Like I mentioned before, the keyed switch is an OSHA requirement. Now, the way I'm using it right now is perfectly safe. I've um, I've done a little bit of homework on these, but shining it on something that's perfectly polished, like a mirror or a metal trash can, the refractory beam is, is powerful enough to cause eye damage, so it's not, you know, most of the intensity is being absorbed by the carpet itself. It won't cause a fire at all, so it's not that powerful, um, but it's definitely not something you want to let your kids play with. This is not a Chinese laser pointer. This is a the real deal. So 
you're probably wondering how these two machines were used in conjunction with each other, and I'll explain that. Um, basically, the laser beam was mounted on a tripod, and using a series of mirrors, it was aimed directly at a surface. Now, the company that owned this device coats circuit boards with a, um, with a highly specialized coating. This equipment was used in the production line to determine the thickness of the film that was deposited onto the surface. This chart would record the thickness based on the amount of light given off by the laser or reflected into the sensor, which is, this was a calibrated machine at one point. <clears throat> now, basically, the laser would shine directly onto the surface or onto a mirror, which would shine onto the surface. It was so sensitive, this printer is so sensitive, that the the amount of light reflected off of the surface could determine the thickness of the coating. It was a transparent coating. I don't know exactly how it worked. I didn't see it in operation, but that's just what I'm surmising, so, or uh, assuming. Anyway. So, that said, let's go ahead and turn this back on again. Let's see what happens when we shine the laser directly into the sensor. It would probably burn it out, but this is science after all, right? So, anyway, turn the laser on. And we just shine it over here. Okay. Now let's watch this needle jump as we point the laser directly at it. Whoa. Okay, it doesn't like that. The chart's not moving either. Here we go. Looks like the pen dried up again. So again, I'm not exactly sure how this worked uh, together. I'm just, uh, you know, screwing around here. <clears throat> but there is some information printed on the printer itself, which tells me, uh, you know, I don't really know how this... Laser interferometer measurement chart. So, yeah. Anyway. I wish I could have gotten a picture of this in action, or a video of it, before my uh, father took it out of service and gave it to me. <laughs> but, there you go. This is a zero adjustment. Um, record standby. Now, this printer alone is a, is a very interesting piece of equipment. Um, it can be used for a variety of re a variety of purposes. From what I can tell, it's actually receiving a volt um, a certain calibrated voltage from this device. I bet you this is actually some sort of a um, solar generator of some kind. But what it's doing is it's receiving voltage from the sensor, and it's actually recording, I mean, internally, it's recording the voltage that it's receiving. So I could probably hook it up to another device of some kind and use it to record uh, a range of uh, voltage fluctuations. Um, but that's what the lower input pen. So this could have had two pens, upper pen and lower pen. So if we pop this cover off, I'll show you where the other pen would mount. If it was actually equipped with two pens, let me try to get this cover off here. Uh, all right, it's kind of a pain in the neck. There we go. If it were equipped with a second pen, it would be mounted right here, but it's not. So uh, there. That's where it would go. And the rod would be mounted here in these upper holes. So that's the good only if it was equipped with a second pen. So it could record two axes or two two measurements in one chart. Which is kinda cool. Not exactly sure what this unit's worth. I'm sure it's not a whole lot, but it's still pretty cool. It was made in nineteen eighty four. I found the date code on the bottom somewhere. It was actually manufactured by the some linear something company. 
This is where the uh, all the adjustment adjustments can be made to it underneath that panel. Linear Instruments Corp is who manufactured it. So sold under the Cole Palmer name, which uh, Cole Palmer is a company that provides or that manufactures or resells a lot of um, calibrated instruments. Um, I know a company I used to work for used to buy their pH meters from them as well. Anyway, so uh, anything else I can tell you about this? No, that's pretty much it. I do have a couple of extra unused charts and uh, some instructions on how to use the laser interferometer when it was a completed unit. But uh, anyway, hopefully that uh, has answered all the questions you never had. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Until then.